What's up? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing like a little story time, life update for you all. There's a new direction that my channel is going to be taking. More like a lane switch. We're just changing lanes, but you get what I'm saying. But before I actually started creating content like that, I kind of wanted to just share a part of me that just felt right to share. I just feel like my content, for what I had planned, wouldn't really resonate as deeply as I would like it to unless... You guys just got to know me a little bit better. I know I've been absent and inconsistent on my channel, but it was mainly just due to my own internal blocks that I was working through, as well as just adjusting to life. So I'm just gonna start with around the time when I guess I officially debuted on YouTube, which was the last day of 2016. I just wanna talk about my channel, my channel success, things that I've learned and things that I applied to my life that I can share with you guys moving forward. So. Yeah, I'm actually really excited. I didn't really plan to say anything in particular in this video, so we basically freestyle on this. So hopefully everything turns out well. Hopefully I'll have no technical difficulties because, bitch, that shit is tired, okay? <laughs> it's tired. Basically, in short, this is my rag to riches story. That was so cringe. Anyway, anyway. Okay, so the start of my channel. Uh, December 2016. I created my channel centralized around 90% like just hair content. I got a lot of questions every single day at the time of how I did my hair, what I did to make my hair look that way, what products I used. At the time, the space and YouTube, there weren't really a lot of black male natural hair creators, so I just thought, I mean, I just bounced an opportunity. Uh, I know Will and maybe Juwan and Maude were doing hair videos at that time, but it wasn't really something that was like really saturated like it is now. So I really took that opportunity to start my channel. I didn't think much of it. I didn't really think YouTube would be my profession. I just kind of went with it. The place in life that I was at at the time was I was a senior in high school at a private Christian high school. And this is so big for me because my experience there was very bittersweet. For those of you who may not know now, I'm more so into Zen spiritualism and returning to self. So I value spirituality over religion like like 90 to 10. No 50, 50, like 90 to 10. So like imagine me growing up at the time. I like boys. I didn't know, I didn't understand. I'm at this Christian school, which threatened to expel you if you were a homosexual. So there was like a lot of pressure there just every day for me and a lot of internal conflict within myself. So when I started my channel, I can gladly say that was probably one of the best decisions that I've made for myself, just because it started this journey. Well, it kind of provided a stepping stone for this never-ending journey for me to reclaim myself and find myself, get to know myself. I can say all of this now in retrospect, but at the time, I just started my channel just for hair content. Okay, so stay with me. So like I was saying, there weren't really a lot of black male creators at that time, so my channel blew up rather quickly. I knew a lot about natural hair just from trial and error and also watching a lot of popping YouTubers at that time. So that's where I got a lot of my inspiration from to channel my own originality, which I think did very well. And over a short period of time, I was able to grow a large following on YouTube that translated over to Instagram. At the time, I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is like a small military retirement type of city. It wasn't really a lot to do, wasn't really a lot of fun to be had for like younger people like myself. So YouTube was really like my fun, basically. <laughs> basically. Um, and I became pretty popular, very well known. I was already kind of well known prior to that, but the YouTube just took it up another notch. And it was to a point where like I would go out on the weekends and people would message me just like, my Instagram or whatever saying, was that you at such and such? Yeah, bitch, that was me. Like, that th that was basically my life. I was a little celebrity in North Carolina. Uh, okay, so, meanwhile, through the growth in my channel, this, like I said, internal conflict just steadily grew because you are who you are regardless of the version of yourself that you present to other people. So, I was really scared about being out of this gay, which this isn't what this video is about, by the way, but this is part of what I want to share with you guys. So, part of that was I didn't accept myself for all the typical reasons a gay person wouldn't accept themselves as they're growing. So, I think it's fair to me to say at the time I didn't really know myself like that, and I was disconnected from myself. So, fast forward, April, May of 2017, I graduate, and this is a new chapter in my life because 
it was my introduction to the real world. I kind of feel like the school that I went to was like kind of like a little prison to like the outside world because there are, you know, certain practices that Christianity teaches. There were many things at that school that I didn't really experience that you would at like a typical public high school. On top of that, growing up, I feel like I didn't really fit in because my interests didn't really correlate with everyone else's interests which led to social anxiety. Not because I was like insecure like that, but it was more so, I don't really relate to these people and they don't really relate to me. So something's off. So I kind of internalized that, which led to me thinking there was something wrong with me. Fast forward to around the time when I'm graduating high school. This is the, chap this is the new chapter in life for me. I really took pride in working so shortly afterwards, I was working two jobs. I worked in fast food, and then I also worked at a movie theater while I was doing YouTube. And somehow, like, I made it all work. I was just going with the flow of things, right? Because I didn't really want to go to college, which I ended up going, but it wasn't that fall semester. It was the winter semester when I had actually started. So I had a lot of free time on my hand. A lot of, I had a lot of extra money, so I was able to do pretty much whatever I wanted. I was basically, like, living my life. <laughs> I was living my life after high school. I still stayed with my parents and I didn't really have this definitive purpose of what I wanted to do in life at the time. I was just there and happy. Ultimately, I quit working at the movie theater. I was kind of influenced by my dad, even though that was probably my favorite job. Off topic really quick, prior to working for myself, entrepreneurship, YouTube, all of that, I worked at retail, fast food, all of that. I will say, working at a movie theater is probably one of the coolest jobs you can have, especially like for a 17, 18 year old, I highly recommend. So I was kind of like forced to quit my movie theater job. I wasn't really too bummed out about that. So at the time, all I had was working at fast food and YouTube. I started college at the end of the year, leading into January. And once again, like I feel like I was just living my life. Like, and I was also getting those refund checks from college. If you know, you know. And I don't really have that many bills, so guess what your boy was doing? Just spending money, all right. Uh, so 2018, I feel like that's one of those prime years for me. And ironically enough, sometimes like a lot of my OG followers, like y'all will reference a lot of things that I do now back to what I was doing and who I was back in 2018. So that really makes me feel good because 2018 was a really good, feel good year for me. I have to sit here and think long and hard about something that like heavily negatively impacted me in the year 2018. Everything was a blur because everything was just flowing like. My YouTube was doing well. I was still working fast food, which I had quit midway through 2018 because actually no, fast food at the end of 2018, even though I wanted to quit at the beginning of the year, I started kind of visualizing how I wanted things to go for myself post high school. It took me about a year, but time really wasn't of the essence. Like my life was just beginning. That's how I had felt. Cause there was, like I said, there was so much that I didn't really experience due to the high school that I went to. Even prior to that, I spent a lot of my early childhood in Germany. Uh, my family was military, so I did get that military benefit and those experiences. Yeah, like I said, everything was kind of relatively new to me, so I was just enjoying everything. 2018 was a great year for me. My channel was doing really well. I wanted to prioritize my Instagram as well and grow that and really become what we call now like a social media influencer. But really that was just me just being a creator, being an artist. So I started to pursue that. And then when I quit uh, fast food, at the end of the year, that's when I started pursuing everything full time. I had a lot of momentum built up over the course of 2018. I was feeling really good at the end of 2018, leading into 2019. That first week of 2019, I actually said for the year 2019, I'm moving to Atlanta. That was part of my goal. I was still in college on and off. Wasn't really passionate about it. I kind of feel like it was really time consuming, even though I was in online classes. I never stayed on campus. Didn't want to, if I didn't have to, still stay with my parents. So I basically, I basically did the work on my own time, even though I didn't really want to do it at all. Because curricular learning was never for me, and I've kind of accepted that about myself now. I dropped out of college in 2019. I'm moving too fast. I started getting hair sponsorships in the year 2018. It wasn't much, but it was a lot for me. Especially because I had, like at this point, like I still didn't really have any expectations for YouTube. I was just doing it, I was getting views, I was making money, I was living my life, and things were just happening. And I was like, happy with the way things were going. I also had like a lot of my first time doing shoots here and there. I went to a lot of casting calls in 2018. My favorite was the one where I went uh, to Wilmington 
to cast for uh, Words in the Bathroom Wall, which actually, FYI, if you watch that movie, I think, excuse me, I think there are like two scenes where you can see my car in the background because they needed to shoot the prom scene with the two characters walking into the building and they had all the cars lined up. You can kind of make up my car in the background. And I also walked behind the two actors in the shot during the movie. So I think that was pretty cool. But yeah, like uh, 2018 was my first time for a lot of stuff. Like just regarding more so my career. Like I said, I started getting hair sponsorships here and there. By the end of 2018, I had built all this momentum. I really started to turn what I did for fun into a profession. So in 2019, I said, I want to move to Atlanta. First week of 2019, Actually, those first six days, party of the year for me. Like, it just felt like a never-ending party. Everything was going well. I had built so many connections in 2018, working with photographers to also grow my Instagram. So I had also new connects just around North Carolina in general. And then as I started networking a little bit, I started to get to know people through Atlanta. Things led to another, which led to me taking my own trip to Atlanta the first week of January with a friend. Um, and it was supposed to be just like experiencing Atlanta as well as looking for ideal spots to potentially move there later on in the year. And I still remember that drive to Atlanta. That was my first time driving that long, like just away from home. And it was so exhilarating. This, and this was Atlanta pre-COVID. So everything was lit. The city at that time, like it never slept. There was always something to do. Everything was popping. For the trip, my camera broke the first night. It got water damage because it rained. There were a lot of things that went wrong for that trip, but it was still like one of the best times of my life up to this point. So the last day of my trip, I get a phone call. It's from my mom saying, that my opa's health isn't doing all too well. Opa is basically German short alternative for grandpa. That was my grandpa. And I think he was affiliated with Agent Orange, so he had some sort of condition where his brain was literally deteriorating as he aged. And as he reached, like, you know, the end of his life cycle, like, it progressively got worse, and it was really unexpected. The phone call was unexpected. That was a really tough drive for me going back. Uh, my mom didn't say that he had passed, but I had felt that he passed. I don't know why, but I just knew. So that was really tough. And a really tough way to start the year, a really tough way, like, this amazing trip in Atlanta to come back to this. At the time, my immediate family that I associated with was really just my mom and my grandma. So I kind of feel like it was the masculine energy in me to stay tough or stay strong. So that's what I did. Uh, his funeral was held the following week in Louisville. We kind of felt like it was most cost effective to drive there versus flying. So that's what we did. It was about a 12 or 13 hour drive, I believe. My stepfather has terrible vision at night. My mom wasn't driving, which as she shouldn't. So like, I think I drove all the way leading up to where you reach the mountains in like Kentucky or wherever it was. And then that's when my stepdad took over. Louisville was nice, but I didn't really get to experience it the way that you typically would because of the reason we were there. I believe we were there for three days. The morning of the last day there, my Instagram gets hacked. Meanwhile, I have all this momentum, like all this work that I put in in 2018 for my social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, I think even Twitter at the time. Like my presence was, it was there. My Instagram gets hacked by there was some sort of like Russian shit going on at the time and a lot of accounts were getting hacked. That morning, my Instagram got hacked and then I get a phone call. Imagine how traumatized I was from getting phone calls in the year of 2019. I get a phone call saying that my dad shot himself. Prior to that, a lot of my close friends and family members were already reaching out to me. Some of them were reaching out because they noticed my, like I just disappeared off of Instagram. Family members were reaching out because they had heard the news before I did. I was actually one of the last few people to find out that I lost my dad that morning. The rest of that day was kind of a blur. I slept the whole trip back to Fayetteville. And from January up until around April, it was a blur. I did a lot of sleeping. Uh, I don't remember much, like it was really dark at that point in time. I stopped doing YouTube. We were able to hire a hacker to hack my Instagram back. And then I had to set up all these protocols to make sure that my Instagram wouldn't be hacked again. So bitch, my shit is on lock now. Like, that ain't happening no more. But yeah, fortunately I did get my Instagram back, but I still wasn't even active on the platform like that. I stopped doing YouTube. I spent a lot of time on myself. I didn't talk to anybody for like three to four months. And I wasn't working, fortunately, 
my channel was still performing very well, so I was still getting paid. I was still able to put aside money because I did say that I still wanted to move in 2019. Like, at that time, that was going to happen for me. Like, I was determined. Uh, so, yeah, like, I was still still alive and well, but not really. Up until around May, which I just had this really strong impulse, once again, to take my ass to Atlanta. So, what did I do? I took my happy, well, I wasn't happy at the time, but I took my happy ass to Atlanta. Once again, an amazing experience. And this was once again pre-COVID, so I really experienced a lot of what Atlanta had to offer. And that's when I knew, like, yeah, Atlanta's for me. Part of being there, I had newfound confidence in myself and my channel, and I just had a lot of inspiration and so many creative ideas just being there, as is the case now, but that just kind of like jump-started things for me again. So after I came back to Fayetteville, guess where I went? Back to my channel, started creating content, started posting on Instagram. At the time, like this was my passion. It still is my passion actually, but like, it was my passion and passion. So like, I invested a lot of time, particularly into YouTube. And by the end of the year, I was back to where I started at the beginning of the year or at the end of 2018. Regarding my channel, my mental health was still up and down, mainly down. It was definitely a huge disconnect deep within myself. If I were to put it in words, I was finding everything outside of myself to just kind of keep going. So I did a lot of working, I did a lot of hanging out. Drinking not so much, but drugs here and there. Here and there. And that actually kind of picked up leading into 2020. But I had, like I said, basically 2020, the beginning of 2020 was like 2019 do-over. The first week of 2020, I'm on a flight. I'm going to Denver for my first hair shoot where I'm being flown out. Denver, Colorado was beautiful. The air was really dry, dry as hell, but the nature is beautiful. The people were nice. There just weren't a lot of black people. I just have to throw that out there. Uh, but it was really clean. Yeah, like I'd recommend anybody just go to Denver just for the experience. Don't look for anything in particular because there wasn't anything that kind of wowed me over. It was just the overall energy and just the nature and just... Yeah, Denver was really nice. As well as the shoe and the connects and the people that I met, which I'm still connected with now. 2020 got off to a great start and your boy was getting paid. Like at this point, this was my profession, so I knew how to make my money. So I had bands just set to the side because like I said, I wanted to move to Atlanta. Then guess what happened? COVID happened, COVID happened, yes. I recall, it just seemed like whenever I mentioned moving to Atlanta, because I didn't give a fuck about COVID, everyone that I mentioned moving to Atlanta to, it kind of seemed like they were against it, just because at the time, statistically, Atlanta was one of the most deadliest, right? And people in Atlanta were telling me it isn't a good time to move there because collectively the energy was, like, people were operating out of fear, panic buying. You know how things were at the beginning of the panic. But to me... I didn't give a fuck because how is that any different from where I was at now? Like, the conditions in Fayetteville were depressing. Things weren't even open. Uh, in certain parts of Fayetteville, like if you went out past a certain time, you were getting arrested. There was a curfew, wasn't shit to do on the weekends. But what is there for me to do here when I knew what I really wanted to do elsewhere? So it seemed like more odds were against me than they were supporting me. Bunch of boys still moved. Everything was working out for me. Um, I did end up getting help from my uncle and my mom. I moved here right towards the end of spring, but COVID was still pretty hot. So moving out of state from North Carolina, which is very slow paced, um, everybody kind of knew everybody, you knew where everything was, to Atlanta. It was basically, that was the equivalent of me running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Like it was a really new experience for me. But I will say like, even now, like, I was really thriving. Like, at that point, like, I really moved from state to state with no real job. I was pursuing entrepreneurship, even though I didn't really understand entrepreneurship at the time. I was just, things were just happening, okay? Things were just happening. I moved to Atlanta, and this is, like, another, like, huge chapter in my life. And I think this period from... And I feel like maybe a lot of you guys can relate to, let me know in the comments below, but I feel like that period from like maybe the end of spring in 2020 to like maybe November, that time gap was very significant for me and just my own like self-development because I moved to Atlanta. Initially, I was supposed to move in February, but I waited and waited and waited because I wanted a roommate because everyone was saying, oh, it's ideal to have a roommate 
when you're getting your own spot for the first time. And so there I was, you know, listening to everybody else telling me how to live my life. Ended up hindering my own mood, but I still made it. I spent a lot of time alone because of the pandemic. A lot of people didn't want to go out, I recall, because of the pandemic. And when you did go out, places were closed, but there were a lot more options in comparison back at home at the time. So overall, I was really making the best of what I could do. So like most people, when you get your own spot, like you're gonna have your growing pains, you're gonna have like your lot of first times for everything, like going out to buy your own toilet scrubber for the first fucking time, or going out to get a coat rack for your house because you're tired of not having anywhere to put your coat on a rainy day. And if I recall, I think there were like a few financial mishaps for me, but I don't think this wasn't the case because I wasn't making money. I think it had more to do with money management and the fact that like, oh shit, like I have rent due on the first of every month. Like I'm not used to that. So your boy had to get used to that. I spent a lot of time to myself and I started diving deeper into spirituality. And I do recall there was this one YouTuber, I believe his name is Ralph, I, I think so. I That could be way off, but that's what it's giving, Ralph. And he's very well known here on this platform. Um, but I stopped watching him shortly after I got invested into him. For my own personal reasons, I'll just say that um, when you're when you're looking for information about spirituality and self-development, be very wary and very aware of who you tune into. I kind of fell into like the pop culture mainstream modality of needing to heal myself and work on my inner wounds and you know, all of that spiritual bullshit that is still heavily talked about and misconceived now. But it was also very helpful because I was also getting to know myself. I want to clarify for you guys that getting to know myself isn't something like as literal as some of you may take it. It's more so like breaking bad habits and developing new habits. Learning to accept but only so much from certain people and certain relationships knowing where to set boundaries, stuff like that. That's what I mean by getting to know myself, getting to know what's best for me. Towards the end of 2020, things got kind of dark. Again, whether it be from dating or just surrounding myself with not ideal people, things got kind of shaky. It was more so like internally for me, my emotional and mental well-being. I was sort of struggling with very heavy sadness and it was mainly just due to a really deep awakening. And you're gonna go through a lot of awakenings like that in life. And sometimes I find that awakenings are really glorified now. And like you're enlightened, like a switch goes off or a bulb lights up. Like that's not how it is. Like most awakenings are ugly. They're depressing. You feel like you're losing your fucking mind because you are. Like that's what awakening is, is losing your mind. So I went through a really difficult time just for myself towards the end of 2020 but I still prided myself in work like I was still very passionate in what I did and I will always be passionate in the things that I'm passionate about period work entrepreneurship was still going very well to me I kind of added freelance model to my resume at that time because I was doing a lot of local shoots with photographers here in Atlanta just for me to kind of get my name out there and connect with a few people but outside of that things picked up like at the very, very end of 2020. In fact, like my birthday month was terrible and it was so it was so frustrating and confusing to me because at that time I wanted to micromanage and control everything in my life, right? And I wanted that whole month to just be glorified and spectacular. It was the complete opposite. I don't think I left the house for more than maybe like four to five days up until Christmas, the week of Christmas. It's getting a little dark, isn't it? Pause really quick, I'm going to adjust my lights. I'm just going to anticipate that the lighting is still soft and flattering because I never film at this time of day, but I've been talking a lot. Flip the page over to 2021 and this was a very big like breakout year. I can confidently say 2021 was the year of self-discovery for me. Because my finances, I wasn't even an issue, didn't have to worry about that. I was basically doing my own thing, which that was me taking heed to advice from my family. Because I said there are certain things that I wanted to do in 2021, but those words, just do your own thing, kind of stuck with me and they still stick with me because 
I feel like that's what we all need to do. Just kind of do our own thing and find peace in the things that we're doing. Because that's what truly makes you successful. So 2021 was I spent a lot on myself. A lot of time, a lot of effort, my looks, a lot of money. Just everything was for myself, for me. It was a very selfish year in a way for me because I've never really been, I've always been a selfless person, which is selfishness. Meanwhile, at the time, I'm still going through my own internal awakening, basically just shedding layers of myself and redefining parts of myself that not only did I think I lost, but were kind of distorted just because... <sighs> not the car horn. Just because I feel like I didn't properly address my grieving and sadness and depression from 2019. It just kind of sat there like a sponge when you put it in a pool of water. It's just going to slowly soak up all the water. It was me kind of putting all like my internal issues to the side, but it's still growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So by, I want to say, April, I felt really confused and conflicted because... I was searching for a lot of things outside of myself to validate my own spirituality. Like I said, spirituality was very big to me at this time because in retrospect, it was the only thing that I truly felt like I had. I was changing a lot as a person and it definitely did affect me as well as the creative side of myself. There were just a lot of question marks and it reached a point where I just kind of gave up on spirituality. I said fuck it, like I really just, I didn't really have a guidance system. For some people it's some sort of branch of religion, for other people it's, I don't know. I didn't have anything at the time because I unplugged from everything. And I didn't realize it now, but I kind of feel like the circumstances following that kind of got me back on track of this never ending journey to self. And at this point regarding my channel, I know I was very absent, I was very inconsistent, but I was also working on other stuff outside of YouTube. I was really all over the place. Like I said, it was a year of self-discovering, so I was experimenting and trying different things. Comfortably indulging, trying to get to know me, if you know, you know. And shortly after that moment of just kind of giving up on everything, I got really sick. Excuse me. I got really sick. Uh, that actually impacted me way more than it should have, I guess. Uh, because I was only in the hospital for maybe like a couple of days, but I was on antibiotics, on a liquid diet, and I wasn't eating, so I lost a lot of weight. I was really in, I really started fitness at the beginning of the year, so I lost a lot of muscle, lost a lot of weight. It was actually like, for one of the few times in my life, was insecure in how I looked. Um, I also got into a car accident, which left me without a car for on and off, maybe two, three months. And not having a car in Atlanta, bitch, is hazardous. Okay, you're not. You're not doing shit without transportation. Uh, I took a trip to LA. That was like one of the little highlight moments within that span of low lights. That was really fun too, but LA was kind of ghetto at the time because of COVID. And I never came to the realization, but I just kind of felt like at that time, things were really just in limbo. Like nothing, everything was stagnant, but it wasn't like that for the remainder of the year. Things started to pick up maybe August. And once again, I just found myself doing everything that I loved and I was having fun doing it. I started reading a lot more and one thing led to another. Uh, I just stumbled upon like Zen spiritualism and like getting back on track to like the real journey, which is the return to self. I say self because there are a lot of complexities and layers to the journey, which we will be talking about moving forward, but I say self opposed to myself, which I had claimed for an earlier period of my life. And once again, by December of 2021, I found myself in a similar situation to December of 2020, where I didn't do much. Something was going on, so my transportation was limited, and I just felt the need to stay to myself. And, and it's like another level to the journey just got unlocked. And the end of 2021, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of nothing or doing less of everything. That's a better way to say it, because I was doing a lot. Um, in retrospect, I was actually overworked for 2021 because I was doing so much. So December was a very, very big contrast to how the rest of the year was for me. And I just concluded that things are always happening for you, not to you, which helped me kind of actualize self-acceptance and that I'm always where I'm supposed to be. 
I'm always in the right place at the right time. There are no right and wrong decisions. There are just decisions you make that lead to more cooperative situations that follow that. Operative word, cooperative. So what I did in my free time for December was I spent a lot of time just being present and getting out of my head because that hindered me a lot. Getting out of my head, returning to self. I did that by um, mainly meditation. That was my biggest thing. And actually, when I first started practicing this, meditation was 90% all I did. Meditation is a word that's like, it's kind of tricky to talk about because some people think meditation is like legs crossed, Buddhist pose, in your existence away. Which, yes, that is meditation, but there are other forms of meditation like breath work or just becoming aware of certain thought patterns and how those evoke certain feelings. I'm at a point now where, like I said, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I feel great, like I really do. Like there's just this very deep and inner sense of security and peace that I have. And I'm at a point where I couldn't even stress about anything if I wanted to. Like if I were to pinpoint something that's going wrong in my life, like I can't even stress about it. Because it's like I've just adopted this new way of living that ain't shit is ever happening to me. If something is happening to me and it's negatively impacting my outside world, it's either A, an imbalance within me, or B, it's a circumstance or situation that's propelling me to even better circumstances or opportunities. So this is my life update. I'm at a point where I just feel rich, like just rich in everything. And it just feels good having this deep knowing that I can create whatever I want to, which you will see more here on this channel. And I'd like to say thank you for all my OG subscribers who are still here. Because I know things have changed, I know people's interests change. I've changed, so I expect my audience to change. So, like I said, there's been a subtle shift in the direction that I'd like my channel to go in. I'm not going to talk about it, I'm just going to show you. I think for my profession, it's better to lead by example and nothing else. So, hope you guys stick around. And I'm really hopeful that somebody, if just one person, was able to take something away from this video. But deep down, everybody watching, Deep down, you have a inner knowing that knows exactly why you're supposed to be watching this video at this very present moment. So, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content from me. And I will see you guys in my next video.